Chapter 3 of The Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. The Son, the Glory of His Person. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. God hath spoken unto us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the effulgence, the outshining of his glory, and the very image of his substance, and upholding all things by the word of his power. We know that whatever a man sets his heart on exercises a mighty influence on the life, and leaves its stamp upon his character. He that follows after vanity becomes vain. He that trusts in a god of his own fancy will find his religion an illusion. He that sets his heart upon the living God will find the living God take possession and fill the heart. It is this that makes it of such infinite consequence that we should not only have a general idea of the Christ through whom God speaks to us, but should know him aright and have our heart filled with all that God has revealed of him. Our knowledge of him will be the food of our faith, and as our faith is, will be our experience of his saving power and of the fellowship with God to which he leads. Let us listen to what we are taught of the Son in whom God speaks to us. Whom he appointed heir of all things. The great object and aim of God in creation was to have an inheritance for his Son, in which he might show forth his glory and find his blessedness. The Son is the final cause, the end of all things. He is the beginning, too, through whom also he made the worlds. He is the origin and efficient cause of all that exists. Without him nothing was made that was made. The place the Son had in the divine being was such that God's relation to all that was outside of himself was only through the Son. Of all that exists, the end and the beginning meet in him. And he is the middle, too, upholding all things by the word of his power. He bears all things. All things consist in him. As little as they were created without him can they exist without him. He upholds them every moment by the word of his power, even as by his word they were created. This is the Son through whom God speaks to us. And what is it that makes him worthy of taking this high place between the Creator and the creature? Because, as the Son, it is he alone in whom the unapproachable and utterly incomprehensible glory of God is made manifest, through whom, as mediator, the uncreated God and the works of his hand can come into contact and fellowship. His relation to creation rests on his relation to the Father. He is the outshining of God's glory and the express image of his substance. As we only know the sun by the light that shines from it, so is Christ the outshining, the revelation of God's glory. As the light that shines from the sun is of the same nature with it, so the sun is of one nature with the Father, God of God. And as a son, he bears the likeness of his Father, because he has his life and nature from him. So the Son of God is the express image of his substance. He is of one substance with the Father, its express image, and hath therefore life in himself, even as the Father hath life in himself. Someone may be tempted to think that these are theological mysteries too deep for the ordinary Christian, and not needful for our Christian faith and life, and they are inclined to ask, of what importance can it be to a simple believer to know all this? My brother, think not thus. It is all important that we know the glory of Jesus. The more the soul is filled with that glory and worships him in it, the more it will see with what confidence it can count upon him to do a divine and supernatural work in us and to lead us to an actual living fellowship with God as our Father. Oh, let us not be so selfish and mean as to be content with the hope that Jesus saves us while we are careless of having intimate personal acquaintance with him. If not for our sake, then for God's sake, for the sake of his infinite love and grace, let us seek to know aright this blessed Son whom the Father has given us. 
let us turn away from earth let us meditate and gaze and worship until he who is the outshining of the divine glory shines into our very heart and he to whom the father hath given such a place as creator and upholder and heir of all take that place with us too and be to us the beginning and centre and end of all it is through his son god speaks to us not through the words of the son only for they too are human words and may just like the inspired words of the prophets bring in but little profit it is through the son the living mighty divine son direct that god speaks it is only in direct living contact with the son that the words can profit and the son not as we superficially think of him but the real divine son as god has revealed him known and worshipped and waited on as the outshining of the divine glory it is this son of god entering into our heart and dwelling there in whom god will speak to us and in whom we shall be brought nigh to god when christ reveals the father it is not to the mind to give us new thoughts about him but in the heart and life so that we know and experience the power in which god can dwell and work in man restoring him to the enjoyment of that blessed fellowship for which he was created and which he lost by the fall the great work of god in heaven the chief thought and longing of his heart is in his son to reach your heart and speak to you Oh, let it be the great work of your life and the great longing of your heart to know this Jesus as a humble, meek disciple to bow at his feet and let him teach you of God and eternal life. Yes, even now, let us bow before him in the fourfold glory in which the word has set him before us. He is the heir of all that God has. He is its creator. He is the upholder too. He is the outshining of God's glory and the perfect image of his substance. O oh, my Saviour, anything to know thee better and in thee to have my God speak to me. No man knoweth the Son, save the Father, neither doth any know the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son willeth to reveal him. How dependent we are on the Father to know the Son, and on the Son to know the Father. Let us acknowledge this dependence in deep humility and believe and wait in meekness of soul for the divine revealing. There are times when there arises in the soul a deep longing to know God. External teaching does not satisfy. Treasure such longing as God's loving drawing. Turn from the world in stillness of soul and exercise faith in the secret power that Jesus can exert in the heart become a disciple of jesus one who follows him and learns of him o thou who art heir creator upholder of all the brightness of the father's glory the express image of his substance o my lord jesus reveal the father to me that i may know that god speaks to me end of chapter three